Hello everyone, I'm Tracy and I'm here with Shane. In today's video, we're gonna be going through the three large fires that are going on in Southern California right now, the Line Fire, Bridge Fire, and the Airport Fire. Before we get started, if you have not subscribed yet, please do so before you leave. And please like, comment, and share this video so we can let as many people know about what's going on here. So I'm going to just go through some basics and then uh, Shane is going to do the aftermath photos and compare the areas that are being burned with the redevelopment plans that we found. So um, the first one that started and that's been going on the longest is the line fire that started on September 5th and that's burned um, 36,500 acres so far and that one is in San Bernardino County. Oh, and um, Gavin Newsom has declared a state of emergency in all four counties, San Bernardino, Riverside, Los Angeles, and Orange County. So that frees up federal funds to help battle these, these wildfires. Okay, so the line fire is the first one that started. And then on the 8th, the bridge fire started. And that's in the Los Angeles National Forest. And I, I think it's affecting Glendora. They might be evacuated already. And that one has burned 50.2 thousand acres. And then the more recent one that started on Monday the 9th is the airport fire. And that one has burned 23,000 acres so far. And that one is in Orange County. So four counties are um, being affected by these three fires. So total, they're over 100 thousand acres, I think it's 110,000 acres. So combined, the, this is considered a mega fire. Um, but you can see here on the map, the, the uh, I believe it's the bridge fire is threatening an area called Pomona. And I'll just give you a little in, insight as far as like areas that I've been. And that is a, a heavily populated area like very tightly packed, like apartments and homes. Uh, I happen to know that about um, about Pomona. Glendora is heavily populated, not quite as packed in, but um, this is a really big deal. Also, uh, Big Bear Lake is threatened, and Big Bear is, if you're in LA, there's a very high chance you have been there or you go there when it snows or you go there in the summer when, when you, you know, to go fishing or things like that. So that would be a huge loss to the Southern California um, people, the economy in Big Bear. And I think a lot of people have a, like a sentimental attachment to, to Big Bear. Okay. And then I'll pass it along to Shane. He's going to go through some of the damage and the, um, the city plans. All right, thanks, Tracy. So before I get into the damage and the plans, I do wanna start with some eye candy and I'm going to just lead with this. This is just uh, a photo that I found in a video that uh, shows a juxtaposition of this wildfire sign next to a baby fire NATO, which has sprung out of like a one or two inch tall grass fire. So you can see the, there's very little grass on fire there to the right, yet somehow there's a little fire NATO springing up out of it. But this wasn't the only fire NATO that was seen. Um, there was several, if not hundreds, of potential fire NATOs that could have been caught on tape. But one of them was really, I guess you could say, magnificent, and I'm going to show it now. And take a look at this fire NATO caught on video. It was captured in Lake Elsinore. And of course, that is when you get um, air dust that's all caught up in the, the flames already there. And it just spins, creating a fire vortex, if you will. Yeah, quite a sight there. themselves from the flames but I look you know at that. look at that flames just ripping through and again I mean since are, you've been talking the flames have gotten even bigger that's what's been remarkable and you know I had to check on these cameras See? to make sure it wasn't a time lapse mm -hmm. you know because some of the other cameras are time lapse this is not a time lapse camera these are just the intensity and Ooh. the speed of these flames that are just absolutely look at that incredible incredible and how tall the flame lengths are. oh my it's like they're creating their own fire which we know yeah. can happen 
It's like they're creating their own fire. And then you saw some more little fire NATOs uh, at the end of that video too, that were like walking across the screen from right to left. Okay. And we so have a video. I also um, want to go. If you want to tell them, we have a video on fire NATOs. You want to get more information? Oh yes, we do have a fire NATO video, which we can post here. If you want to go check that out. And uh, now I want to get into the damage and I'm going to lead with, uh, this is a kind of a collage of the various damage, the damage from all three fires. Uh, I'm just going to lead with this so that you can see the extent of the damage. We're hearing that more than 30 homes have been destroyed. I want to show you where we are here in Wrightwood. This shows you one of the homes that have been destroyed. It's completely leveled because of the bridge fire. Basically what's standing is that fireplace and the tree right next to it. It's extremely scary because of the situation. They were trying to evacuate. The LA County Fire says the bridge fire destroyed 20 homes in Mount Baldy, another 13 homes in Wrightwood, along with six cabins in the wilderness area. Sky 5 HD has been above. This is the Decker Canyon area where we did see some homes and property destroyed in that area. The fire jumped Ortega Highway. It's on both sides of Ortega Highway. Ortega Highway obviously shut down. It's a big corridor between South Orange County and Riverside County. You can't go through it right now as the fire has burned on both sides of the road. Another area that saw some damage, El Carrizo Village. Let's take a look at that video where we saw a lot of destruction over in the that area, but with all the destruction we've seen, we also saw some areas that, well, they were saved a little bit. Authorities now believe this fire was intentionally set, and in this neighborhood today, firefighters mopping up. We're in Running Springs. They've been evacuated in this town for days now, still are. Video shows firefighters really trying to defend homes when flames rush through this area. Sadly, this one could not be saved. Damage revealed. Brooke Pellinchar's family home on Pinecone Drive destroyed by flames. All that's left standing is the chimney of what she thought would be her forever home. A GoFundMe has been started for this family. If you Here, I wanted to point out that it's burning by the metal. And then here, I wanted to point out these branches are enveloped by like a thin layer of flame, which it looks very unusual. Okay, so yeah, that was some really strange damage. Uh, we saw a lot of aluminum that was melted. We saw glass that was melted. And the only things that seemed to remain were steel and stone. Okay, so now I'm going to go into each fire one by one. And I want to play this clip from Desmond Shaw. He's a uh, reporter who is on the Sky Cal Chopper. And uh, he does a really good job at reporting these fires. Now, this would be the eastern edge of the fire, the head of the fire, if you would. As we pan to the left, I'm just trying to give you a little perspective. It's a smoke event right now. It's going to change when it gets hot. But that's Yukaipa off to the left side of your screen, off the 38. Down on 38, there is an area uh, called Mountain Home Village that is, is somewhat threatened. It's right down on the bottom of your screen. You'll see some houses down in there. I want to pan back to the right. It's right in that area. But we'll go to the right and then show you where the fire started. Now, see all that smoke? You see that dot? That's where the fire started Thursday at 6 o'clock. Now we'll come off and go to the satellite view. Uh, we got to go up there and go off the satellite view. And that gives you an, an idea where it burned. It burned to the north of where it started, up towards the 33, up towards Running Springs and Lake Arrowhead. So we'll come back off that and go to our live shot or our shot without the satellite up and push into that area. Arrowhead is up there. Running Springs is up there. All right. So, yeah, you could see where the fire started and where it burned to. And uh, I really like the way that Desmond Shaw shows the those fires anyway. Um, so, yeah, Big Bear was another one of those places that was affected. And there were even roadblocks, just like there was, you know, in some of these other fires. And uh, there was a lot of traffic and people had trouble getting out. Um, I do want to show a clip from Big Bear about the roadblocks. Um, it's because of these road closures here that even we just met one man who says that his teenage children are in an Airbnb in Big Bear. He left, and when he came back, he couldn't get back to them. Yeah, so the, the kids were stuck up in Big Bear, and he was unable to get back to them because of the roadblocks. So we hope that, you know, someone else was able to get in and get them or they were able to find another ride out with another evacuee. All right. So now I want to go into another fire. So this would be the next one that started was the the bridge fire that started in the Angeles National Forest near Glendora. Um, I do have a picture of one of the structures that was impacted, but I also have some videos that I want to show as well. So now we're going to go into the bridge fire, and I want to show this structure as it burned. All 
All right, so now you can see like how the entire home is engulfed, uh, even the full length of some of the boards. And it's a very, very violent fire, as they would say. You can see just how much of an inferno it is. Did a lot of damage to that structure, at least. Okay, so let me take this picture down. All right, and so we do have some more videos about the bridge fire in the Wrightwood area. Um, the first thing I want to show is some quotes from the residents who live there who experienced the fire for themselves and said it was unlike anything they've ever seen before. I've been a Wrightwood resident for 30 years. I've been through a lot of fires. I've never seen it move that fast. It's behind my house, and it reminds me of what we saw at Paradise. That's what it looks like up there. When I had asked my neighbor who had lived in Wrightwood for 30 plus years, mm. like, what do you think we should do? Is everything okay? And she was like, no, I haven't seen this. Like, we, we should go. It was quiet as, as a day, like, like nothing mm. was going on. And then before you know it, we couldn't even see anything. The smoke was hurting our lungs and we just decided to leave on our own. And the roads were bumper to bumper and it was it was it was utter chaos i had to prioritize what to do and like i said you know it was there was no evacuation warnings there was no um there was no police coming up and down the streets we just had to run for our lives yeah so as you can see there was uh, people who lived there for 30 years who said they've never seen anything like that before outside of paradise california and so, um, yeah, that's pretty destructive. Um, let's see here. I have another video that I want to go to. So this is about the fire behavior. Uh, so not only did the residents comment on the fire behavior, but fire professionals like the firefighters and the, the reporters have also never seen anything like this before. Whoops, that's the wrong video. I misclicked. Here we go. The fire activities uh, is extreme. Um, it's the probably the most extreme I've seen in 20 years. A number of fires raging out of control in Southern California tonight. The bridge fire in the Angeles National Forest has exploded in size over just the past several hours. Once we can put that threat to rest, then yes, we have our damage assessment teams will come in and start to wrap our heads around what took place. I spoke to one of your battalion chiefs earlier. He described it as some of the scariest and kind of wildest fire behavior that he had seen. Is this kind of on par with what you saw? He said it just, I mean, it literally exploded in a matter of minutes. Yes, down the road, a half mile, a mile, we're seeing very active, erratic fire behavior. Uh, this may be the most surprising of all of them. All three have exploded in really untraditional fashion is exactly what I'm hearing from firefighters that I have spoken to in the last 48 hours across our area who tell me this fire, these fires have really caught the firefighting community almost somewhat by surprise in the sense that the behavior of the fire, despite the preparedness on the part of our tremendously equipped fire departments and Fire, you know, firefighting agencies across the region, the behavior of the fire is just different. They say it's just different than fires and fire seasons of previous years. So take for that what you will, or with that what you will, because I, I you know, for me, uh, you know, I certainly can't remember, certainly in the last 10 years, anything quite like this, where you have three major fires all burning in one week without very much wind. All right, here I wanted to show you how each of the boards are burning relatively evenly. And when they do another close up of the tree, you're going to see even the tree bark itself has like an envelope of thin flames all along the surface on one side facing the house. So, yeah, here, now that they've zoomed in, you can see all the boards are burning evenly. And even the edge of the tree there is burning super evenly with like one inch long flames. All right, so now I want to go into more of the fire damage. Shane, yeah, really ahead. quick, I wanted to um, point some things out for those who are a little bit newer to um, this information. 
we when we put these videos together, we try to point out similarities that we see in the other fires that we've been reporting on, namely the Lahaina fire. So something we hear is that is it extremely fast moving fire. And then we're gonna point out the aftermath photos that look similar to the other fires and also the fire behavior being extremely intense and aggressive. And then we also like to share the witness testimony of people that were, that experienced it. So I just wanted to clear that up. Yeah, that does remind me. So the, the fire behavior on that last structure that we just saw was very reminiscent of the Wyola church that we saw in Lahaina, which had all the boards burning evenly at the same time, which usually a wooden board like that would burn from one end to the other and not evenly along the entire length. Okay, so now I wanna go into some of the photos and uh, go over this damage here. So one thing we have seen in other fires is that houses have been leveled into uh, a footprint is it's not showing is it can you see I this can see it. yeah okay all right so this house actually has been reduced into a like a gray ash footprint and this is something we've seen many many times before it's very much like paradise very much like santa rosa and also like lahaina and elsewhere we've seen houses that completely burn into a white gray ash and it leaves very little behind except for stone and steel now we have another house. This one is in Wrightwood at the bridge fire. Um, this is another house that was leveled. And I do wanna explain how the uh, this Wrightwood uh, area was damaged by the bridge fire. The bridge fire is one of the fastest growing fires in California history. In a single 24 hour period, this fire gained over 40, about 40,000 acres worth of area. Um, that's actually pretty much unheard of um, even since, you know, Santa Rosa or Paradise, California, we have not seen a fire spread that far that fast. So this house looks like it's been pretty much leveled to its foundation. Uh, we can zoom in on this a little bit and see that there are some a semblance of a structure yet uh, left, but this is most likely, um, most likely a steel frame that's perhaps survived. Uh, there might be some pieces of unburned wood there that are still attached, but it's uh, basically total devastation. They see, we see the same thing with the cars, whereas we see a bunch of cars here. Uh, they're all missing their tires and their door handles and even the windows. Um, now, we can't tell if the windows have broken in this one, but here's another view of a car. This is also in Wrightwood, and we can see that the rims and perhaps even the engine block have melted and ran quite a distance from the car. And when we zoom in here, if you look very closely, on the dashboard area by the steering wheel, you can see little bits like clumps of uh, melted glass that have coagulated there. So it does take about 2,700 degrees to melt glass and uh, forest fires don't usually burn above 1,400. All right, so now I wanna go into, let's see here. Um, I have a video, so I'm gonna go to the next fire. This is the airport fire that we're gonna go into next. And I have another chopper video that shows that area. This is where the fire started yesterday. As I zoom in here, you're going to see that Robinson Ranch area here just to the left of their screen. And uh, the fire retardant drops that have saved that pro that community, I should say. And uh, the fire that raced up Tribuco Canyon all the way up to San Diego Peak. The fire did get into the uh, uh, communication towers area there. But fortunately, it sounds like there's been nothing lost there, but uh, it did continue. The fire did continue to stretch out towards the north. In fact, uh, you see that one of the tankers flying through the shot there. They've been laying down some fire retardant drops on that line. That's the latest overhead up in Sky 5. I'll send it back. All right. So yeah, that was another one uh, was, uh, that was the airport fire in Orange County. And uh, it uh, that one is over twenty about twenty four thousand acres now. Um, now he did mention those uh, towers; they didn't actually lose any, but we do have video from those towers, and I'm going to show that now. Uh, as you see here, this is time lapse video of the fire in the Cleveland National Forest as it approached. You notice the pink stuff on the lens; that was fire retardant from a drop. It may not have helped, as we see it burned right up and past those communications antenna. All right, so in that video, you could see that they even sprayed fire retardant on the ground. Some of it even got on the camera. 
But even though they did that, the fire still advanced beyond the fire retardant. But however, those towers were actually saved. So somehow the towers were not destroyed. Um, I want to go into uh, the some damage now that we have from the airport fire, and this is in the Carrizo Village area of Lake Elsinore. We are looking at the El Carrizo neighborhood, El Carrizo Street. It is gone. House after house, we walked by shells of homes and cars and gardens and driveways and gar and playscapes. All the evidence of a community now burned to the ground. It was like a movie. It was hard to tell how many homes were gone. Um, I mean, really, as far as I could see and tell, all of them were gone. Back here live. Yeah, so that was the El Carrizo Village, which is in the Lake Elsinore area. And there were many neighborhoods like El Carrizo where it appeared as if uh, all of the homes were gone. However, there were probably some neighborhoods in the Elsinore, Lake Elsinore area that were saved. We just don't have the details on those yet. Now, I want to go into the plans, actually. So a lot of these fires, uh, at least the line fire and the bridge fire, are adjacent to redevelopment plans. And uh, the airport fire is also uh, does have a redevelopment plan for the city of Elsinore as well. So I'm going to jump into this. So this is the San Bernardino general plan, and it shows um, available land that could be used for developing housing. So this is the what they call vacant developable land. And uh, you can see the red boxes are the areas where they want to develop. And the area just above and to the east of uh, San Bernardino is exactly where the line fire is. It started in Glendora and it burned to the north and to the east. So all of those red boxes on the right side of the screen are within the fire footprint. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer here and we can see to the east uh, to the north and the east um, is uh, Lake uh, Big Bear Lake, which was also affected by the fire. And then they also show a little bit of a zone down there just east of Yukaipa, which was also impacted. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit more and I'm going to show this is the Yukaipa area and the Big Bear Lake area at the top left. So those are actually areas that were planned to be redeveloped and now they have also burned. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out about San Bernardino, San Bernardino development plans is that they have housing that is supposed to be sustainable development. So this housing is based on sustainable development and they have plans that go into um, to basically all of the globalist talking points. Uh, they just recently updated the San Bernardino general plan for 2050 and it's full of globalist plans and talking points. Uh, they talk about mobility and circulation. They want to reduce automobile congestion and uh, encourage pedestrian and bicycle traffic, as well as other modes of transit. Uh, they also uh, focus on utilities and infrastructure, parks and trails. Um, some more things is that they're concerned with is land use, housing and economic development. And then here they're also talking about energy and water conservation, as well as safety and resilience. Uh, some other things that they talk about are climate change and trying to go low carbon for greater sustainability. Uh, They're also going to try to manage the water and all the other resources as well. So uh, this is uh, that was an update to the previous San Bernardino plan, which uh, here is shown. Uh, they talk about all of the un unincorporated areas in San Bernardino County. Now, this mountain region is where the fire was. And as you can see, every single unincorporated mountain region has now burned. All right. So now I'm going to go into uh, some more plans. So there is a high speed rail, this line that's in the green that goes from basically Riverside towards San Bernardino and then all the way over to Burn Burbank. Uh, this is a high-speed rail that's been proposed, and it is just south of these two fires. So the fire at the top center is the bridge fire, and the fire at the top right is the line fire. Now, the entire area to the north of 210 between these two fires is now in a get-ready level one evacuation warning. So this entire area just above the fire is now in an evacuation warning, and it is headed south towards this green line. Now, uh, I do have, uh, it shows Pomona here as being one of the stations, one of these uh, stations on this high-speed rail. And the fire is encroaching south towards Pomona and San Dimas and Glendora. 
And so they are in evacuation zone. And if the fire does actually burn completely through uh, San Dimas, then it would reach the area to be developed for this high-speed rail. I have another picture of Pomona, which shows the center section where this high-speed rail is going to go through. And this is a transit-oriented development corridor, as well as the area to the north where they've already evacuated. All right. So San Dimas is also completely located within the level one get ready evacuation zone. And this red area, which is downtown San Dimas, is located right exactly where the, the rail is supposed to go through. Another thing about downtown San Dimas is they have this, uh, this yellow line, which is the light rail known as the gold line. And areas adjacent to each side of this rail are designated as opportunity sites for the transit oriented development corridor. All right. So now I also found out that yeah. Can I just add some, can I just add something really quick because I um, have used sure. the the metro here in Southern California, and um, you know I think like a lot of other people I was happy to hear that would there would be some sort of public transit. You know, uh, hopefully it would you know take out the need for a car and make things a lot easier. But um, I see the the rail going through. This is not, for the most part, is not above ground. So it blocks traffic. So in LA, traffic is really bad. It makes it worse. It's made traffic worse, in my opinion. I don't know if the state will ever come out and say that. But another thing that I, I believe is uh, contributing to the low ridership is that crime is has gotten so bad in Southern California. And I know the last time I was on the Metro, I remember thinking like, I'm never, I don't want to do this again. Like it just didn't feel safe. Um, and that was the last time I went on it. And I certainly will not bring my kids on it because it's, I would say at least each car has maybe one or two homeless people, you know, hanging out there. It's nice and cool on the, on, in the, um, in the car. But whenever I see it go by and I do see it, a pretty decent amount of times it's virtually empty and so you know I, I just wanted to give that feedback they're doing all this for a project that I think is is hardly used and also you need to drive to the station these stations aren't necessarily in walking distance so you do need either a car or an uber to get to and from the um, metro stations I just wanted to share that Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard similar things about the the Honolulu rail as well. So they have uh, only made traffic worse by, you know, building this rail in Honolulu. And not only has it made traffic worse, but also in Honolulu, no one seems to be riding the rail. So we've got all these cars that are stopping for this, this rail that has no one on it. All right. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so Orange County does have a transit oriented development program. And, or transit-oriented development uh, project. However, uh, the fire is actually on the east side or the right side of these two photos. And there is not a transit-oriented development corridor that runs through that zone. However, uh, Lake Elsinore is located there and they do have several projects as you can see on this map. These are all the different projects that are uh, scheduled for the Lake Elsinore area. Now, um, this is an older map that uh, some of these projects may have been started by now, but there is a new update. So Lake Elsinore just recently in April of 2024, either fortunately or unfortunately, just had their climate resilience vulnerability assessment. And uh, they did mention a previous fire in 2018, which was in Lake Elsinore, the Holy Fire. And... Uh, they did an assessment of the zones. So these are this is the wildfire hazard zones that are in Lake Elsinore. And it's also overlaid with their transportation areas that they wish to redevelop. So as you can see, the TOD plans or transit oriented development plans have um, they have um, road upgrades that are planned for areas that run through these wildfire risk areas. Now, I haven't seen the actual burn map for Lake Elsinore yet, but it appears that most of these areas that are in the red have been impacted with uh, neighborhoods like El Carrizo being completely destroyed. 
So we just have to wait and see how many of these neighborhoods in these red areas were destroyed and how much of the area was cleared for redevelopment. But the fact is that all of these areas do have plans, whether it be a transit oriented development corridor, a high speed rail, or even just, you know, like the Lake Elsinore plans. Um, they, you know, they have plans to redevelop these areas and the fire has only, only expedited that process. All right. So that's all I have for today. Back to you, Tracy. So something else I thought about, and um, I, I just wanted to give a little personal opinion because I've seen some of these areas. Uh, the areas that we talked about are not, uh, having fires is pretty normal. I know the La Angeles National Forest has been on fire many times. Uh, Glendora has been affected uh, a number of times as well. I'm not as familiar with the Orange County area, but it seems like a lot, especially with these, all the areas that have been like destroyed where the structures are gone, they tend to be a little bit more rural. Um, the only, with the exception of uh, Pomona. So it's going to be tricky if they want to clear areas that are super densely populated like Pomona because a wildfire in an area like that is going to be extremely suspect because there's not a lot of trees or anything. But I have been hearing of like these smaller structure fires that are happening randomly, like a parking lot goes on fire and all the, all the cars are burned and they're in like an apartment uh, building. I've been hearing a lot of things like that. Um, for some reason, cars are being burned out of very, it's very common and it's just something I've noticed, but it'll be interesting how they decide to clear all this area because of the extremely densely populated um, areas that they, that they need to go through for these projects. And another thing, these projects, the high speed, speed rail is extremely unpopular, similar to the heart project in Honolulu. It's uh, extremely expensive and a lot of people are simply not going to use it. So their, their, their taxpayer money is going to a project that is not going to really help them in any way. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today. If you're here for the live chat, thank you so much for your participation. I, I did want to bring something up that happened recently that affects people such as uh, myself and Shane, um, a big influencer, conservative uh, um, creator, uh, Candace Owens, was demonetized and kicked off of her YouTube channel in a very, very um, dramatic way. So the way um, YouTube treats its creators is if you break any of the rules and you agree to a, a lot of rules, they can give you a strike, which means that um, I think they'll demonetize some of the, the videos, meaning it won't earn anything and you get kicked out. This is what I hear for a week. You can't upload, do any kind of lives or post or anything like that. But she got three back to back within minutes of each other. So that was really shocking. Um, at, on the same day, another company where Benny Johnson, um, Dave Rubin, uh, Lauren Chen, and someone named Poole. I, I didn't know. I know Benny and um, Dave Rubin, but they have, they're now under investigation for taking money from Russia to, you know, say things a certain way or influence their audience a certain way. They claim that they, these creators were getting paid $100,000 a week for one video, which is very suspect because even if that video got uh, a million views, it's not going to earn more than six or $7,000. So getting paid $100,000 per video is extremely excessive, um, but I could see a lot of people taking that opportunity, you know, very easily without question, but it is a little suspicious, but we'll, we'll see. I don't know exactly how much of this information is verified yet. I find it highly ironic that conservatives are being reported or being, you know, reported as colluding with Russia when Russia, Russia's, you know, Prime Minister uh, Putin actually said he supports Kamal, so it makes no sense. Oh, I, he does. I didn't know that. Yeah, that. yeah. Vladimir Putin recently came out and gave his support for Kamala Harris. 
So that blows that conservative theory out of the water as being collusive with Russia. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Um, but I, I, the Candace Owens thing, I feel like was kind of like a show of force, you know, to take down someone like that, that's so visible, that has such strongly conservative views um, in a way that was so swift and shocking, you know, like you normally get a chance. And it was like one, one interview with Kanye West, I think that kind of, you know, um, started the whole thing, but I just wanted to let you guys know what's going on, you know, in, in a creator's world. And it gets really scary because I do have these fears that I'm going to go online and just not be able to get into my YouTube account. And that's for someone that's been doing this for a long time, it's, it's really, um, terrifying. So anyway, I thought I'd share that, but, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys all for being here and we'll see you all soon. Bye.